<sighs> Morning. It is a beautiful day to be on the road again, sleeping in another parking lot. And I got the best night's sleep that I think I've gotten in at least a week and a half, two weeks, because it was finally cool enough outside to sleep without having my AC on, because we drove 10 and a half uh, hours, seemed to be blocked in by the food truck. Well, good thing no one's behind me. But yeah, we drove 10 hours yesterday up here to Albuquerque, New Mexico from the center of the world. So finally made it out of the heat and we're continuing on our journey because we are kind of in a rush to get back home because I got a wedding I got to get to back in Maryland. So we are continuing westward today. I guess more northward. We're heading towards Colorado. And there's something up in Colorado that I've wanted to try for a while, and that is Rocky Mountain Oysters. And if you're unfamiliar with what a Rocky Mountain Oyster is, uh, it's a bull testicle. So I'm gonna go up there, see if we can find any bull testicles to cook for dinner tonight. But before we can do that, there's a few things that I've gotta get done. The first of which being, I need a suit. So as you guys already know, I'm a bum who lives in his van, and that means I don't have any nice clothes and 99% of the time I dress like a 10th grader who just got out of gym class which means I gotta go get a suit for this wedding oh look at that truck moved just in time it's always so weird pulling into a town that you've never been to after dark and then waking up and seeing it for the first time it never looks how you imagine it to all right men's warehouse it's time to go get a new look so much of a van life bum anymore. And yeah, I know how to tie a tie. I was on Junior Mercy soccer team in high school. Formal Fridays, I had to tie a tie every day. <laughs> Some takes off, it's kind of hot. I also did, did get some new shoes. You're gonna look good at this wedding. Let's take this off, it's hot. All right, shout out to Men's Warehouse. Can't see through the tree. Had her in Albuquerque for helping me get fitted for a suit and also tailoring it same day within an hour. So now we are officially ready to complete our drive. The reason that I'm going home is kind of twofold. So I gotta be home for this wedding that my girlfriend and I got invited to. And also, eventually I'd have to go home anyways to pick up the mini truck and register in Maryland. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm building out a Daihatsu Hijet mini truck camper. And it's currently on the East Coast having a camper shell built onto the back of it. And I'm probably gonna have to go pick that up within the next two weeks. So I figured might as well make a trip out of it pick up the truck, maybe tow it behind the van all the way back to California after I get it registered in Maryland. Because I think it's a little bit easier to register those things in Maryland. So yeah, anyways, let's kill another five hours of this drive and hopefully find ourselves some bull testicles. We have made it to the wonderful town of Pueblo, Colorado. Just east of the Rocky Mountains and one of the largest steel producing cities in all of California, which also is apparently called Steel City, uh, but I thought that was Pittsburgh, so I don't know. But on the drive here, we were dodging storm cell after storm cell, some of which that made enough hail to make it seem like there was a fresh coat of snow across the pavement. There were a bunch of overturned cars and we ended up running into a pocket of rain at the end, but luckily no hail. But we were at the testicle store, aka Frank's Meat Market, and uh, didn't realize it when I was on my way here. They're actually closed, so no testicles available. We're just gonna have to try to find another way to get some. All right, so I was looking at my phone, and I think I might have an idea where we can get some. It's about five minutes away. Let's head over there. There we go. That's idea number two. La Tronica's Italian restaurant. Apparently they have uh, Rocky Mountain Oysters on the menu. Okay. How's it going? Yes, can I get an order of the Rocky Mountain Oysters? Okay, you want to just decide? Yes, please. All right, so here they are. Basically when you make Rocky Mountain Oysters, you cut them up super thin, kind of like a chip. You batter them and you fry them. And then this is how they come out. So without further ado, let's give them a try. 
a little bit chewy, but not bad. Well, it was pretty loud in there, so I couldn't really say much, but that was a very interesting restaurant experience. Got my Rocky Mountain oysters, AKA fried, you know what? I think for dinner tonight, I got my Rocky Mountain oysters as a side, and I think for my main course, we're gonna cook another famous Colorado dish, the Colorado green chili. So let's go get the ingredients. Look at that sky. It almost looks like a painting. So since it was so loud in that restaurant, I wasn't able to really talk that much. Overall, didn't really care for the taste of uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Maybe it was just because in my mind, I, was, I knew what I was eating, and it was making them feel weird for me, but they seemed a little chewy. Um, the texture just really wasn't there, and definitely would be something I would order on a normal basis, but one time thing, one in Rome, had to try them. But I am excited for this Colorado chili because it actually does look really good. You already know, back at the wonderful Wally World. All right, so I think I got everything I need to make traditional Colorado green chili. I looked it up online and I couldn't find any real consensus on a singular recipe or even a singular way to serve this. Sometimes it's served as a dip for chips, sometimes it's served kind of in a taco, and sometimes it's served in a stew. But the number one way that I found it is in kind of like a stew type format. But I did have to substitute a few ingredients. I couldn't find any Anaheim peppers, so we had to get jalapeno peppers. But since there's no real consensus on the recipe, I don't feel too bad about it. So technically, I think it would be fine to stay overnight in this Walmart parking lot that we're currently in, but I don't really want to, and there's a rest stop that's kind of right down the road. So packing all this stuff up, and then we're gonna head down there, make some chili. And there we go. We've made it to our beautiful campsite for the night, the Churro Verde rest area. Definitely looks a little bit creepy. She looks good enough for a little camp session. I don't know how well you guys can see anything out here, but on our own for the night. So I truly can't even begin to explain how good it feels to step out of the van and be in, I think it's 55 degrees out right now. For the last 10 days I've been in Vegas and Arizona and it's been blistering hot and I basically wanted to crawl out of my skin. And now I borderline need a sweatshirt. Although it is pretty creepy out here, there is one thing that rest stops have that Walmarts don't, at least 24 hours. And that is bathrooms. So creepy in here. Ugh. Let's get back to the van. All right. Back in our safe space. Before we get started cooking dinner, which I'm gonna start right away because I'm starving. Just drove for six hours. I was reading some comments that you guys left in my video about my cooking, and a bunch of people were saying that I have a bad habit of wiping my hands on my pants. So a couple days ago after reading those comments and watching my videos and realizing that I do indeed have a problem with wiping my hands on my pants, I went into Walmart and I got myself an apron and I was sitting in the van last night staring at this thing trying to figure out how I could make it my own and add a little personal touch to it. And I came up with this. I don't know if you guys can read that, but there's two boxes highlighted on either side, a little note that says wipe here. Because when I put it on and tie it around myself, these little spots right here with those boxes, or right where I would wipe my hands. So now, I've got myself a little cooking apron. I won't destroy any more of my pants. Let me know if you guys like these. Maybe I'll add them to my merch store. So yeah, let's get cooking. So first step to getting this chili cooked, preheat the oven, and then we're gonna cook up some pork. So when I was looking up this recipe online for a Colorado green chili, I couldn't really find a definitive answer for why Colorado is famous for green chili or why it's so popular here. And apparently there is a heated debate online as well as to whether Colorado is famous for green chili, which is the dish I'm making, or green chilies like the pepper. And to me at least, it doesn't really make sense for Colorado to be famous for green chilies when they're bordering New Mexico, which is the chili capital of the world. I mean, they literally have it on their license plates. So it doesn't really make sense for green chilies to be special in Colorado in any way, but for some reason it's up for debate and there's no real definitive answer. I couldn't find anything online that really set in stone that why this dish is so popular, but I don't know. Maybe somebody from Colorado can let me know. So now that we've got our pork all cut up, we can pour some oil in the pan, get that nice and hot. And we're keeping the seasoning since these are going into a stew. Pretty simple. We're just gonna hit these with some salt and pepper. Now that our oil is nice and hot, throw those in there. And then add just a touch of whole cumin seed. According to the recipe I found online, but as I said, Apparently, there are multiple recipes for cooking this and multiple ways you can do it. This is just the one that I found and the one that I'm doing. 
And while we wait for those bad boys to cook up, I'm gonna prep the rest of these ingredients starting with this here yellow onion. And don't worry, I washed the cutting board and the knife. I'm not cutting up my veggies with raw meat juice. Oh my eyes. Oh. Onion done. Now I can take this cilantro, cut off a bit, and rough chop that up. Oh my eyeballs. Uh. All right, so now that we've got our veggies prepped, pork is done, ready to come out. Nice and browned, beautifully cooked, if I might say so myself. And now, since I completely forgot, we got to roast our peppers. So I'm gonna throw those in the oven. It's right on the wire rack. And let them roast for about 10 minutes. Alrighty, I think these peppers are just about done. Nice and roasted, just starting to blister. So now we just gotta let these cool off a little bit before we can move on to the next step. Ooh, hot. All right, now that we've let these peppers cool for long enough that I can touch them, I cut them open to help them cool a little faster. You can take them, remove the stems off all of them, like so, and then de-seed them. And something I've gotta tell myself or remind myself after I de-seed these jalapenos is that I need to wash my hands. Because last time I handled a jalapeno, um, and didn't wash my hands, I went to the bathroom, and that was probably the worst experience of my entire life. So, I do not want a repeat of that. Now that we've got these de-seeded, wipe my hands off. We can chop these bad boys up. I'm just rough chopping these things. No real method to the madness here. There we go. Now, I gotta wash my hands. So, now that we've got everything prepped and ready, we can add it to our oil that we used to brown the pork. Chilies, onion, and cilantro. And I'm not using all the chilies. And also, a crap ton of garlic. And then we can let these cook down until fragrant and the onions are translucent. All right, and now that those are cooked up nicely, we can add just a spoonful of flour, soak up all that excess moisture, and then we can take these and transfer them to my back pot over here that I've had preheating, just so we have a little bit more depth. And then we can add back in the pork, just like that. Some crushed tomatilla, but I'm not sure if that's how you say that, so don't make fun of me. But I couldn't find any at the store, so all I got is this uh, salsa verde, but the only ingredient really in here is tomatilla, tomatilla, tomatillo, I don't know. So we'll add those in, and then two cups of chicken stock. And now we just gotta bring this whole pot to a boil, just like that, and now we can cover it, turn the heat down, and let it simmer for 45 minutes while we wait for it to reduce. And we're back. Gave it about an hour, let that uh, stew thicken up a little bit. I also, off camera, added some more salt and a little bit of garlic powder and shredded up this chicken because I thought it would make it a little bit easier to eat, but it looks absolutely delicious. And I had to put a uh, sweatshirt on because it's actually pretty cold in here. It says 67, but it's probably more like 50, 49 degrees outside, so let's eat. And the fact that it's cold makes eating a steaming hot, spicy pot of stew sound that much better. And I actually am getting way better with the portion controls in my videos. When I first started filming videos and I would cook, I would copy the recipe exactly um, and end up with like five or six portions. That would end up taking a bunch of space in my fridge, but perfect single portion of Colorado green chili stew stuff. I'm really hoping that it's not too spicy. Although I do love spicy foods, I don't like too spicy foods. Kind of ruins the experience for me, but I guess we'll see. The recipe online also says, you should enjoy this dish with tortilla chips and it says with lime wedges too. So cut one of these bad boys up real quick. Okay. I feel so much more professional with this apron on too. I think I might wear this every video. So I'm not sure what the standard procedure here is and stew has always kind of confused me with what is the best way to eat it because it's a little bit thicker than soup, but it's still not thick enough for a fork. I think a spoon would be better. And this looks so hot. 
but it does look good. I mean, it doesn't maybe look the most appetizing on camera, but it smells absolutely heavenly. So, without further ado, cheers, Colorado. Thank you for giving me, actually, you know what? Fried bull testicles, which still sounds just as disgusting, and green chili stew. Do one more bite of the bull testicle. Really didn't like them that much. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm just psyching myself out and just kind of mentally ruining these for myself. Because, like, yeah, they're that bad. Never mind. Come to Colorado, try them out. Let me know what you think, but I don't think they're that good. Use these chips as a little vessel to get the stew into my mouth. There we go. First bite. Cheers. Wow. <laughs> That's actually really good. I really didn't have high expectations for this little this little stew, but it's actually extremely tasty. I think it would be great on like a cold winter night or something. And it's really not too spicy. I think it's got the perfect level of spice to it. It's definitely got a kick, but it's not too bad. This is one of those dishes that I'll definitely be making again in my free time. One more thing. I'm gonna start a new rating system for the foods I cook. And this isn't based on anything scientific or anything that you should take as fact. It's just based on my own taste buds and what I like. And since I cook so many foods, I figured I'd start a rating system. And then after you guys watch my videos, you guys can make them and then leave a comment for what you guys think. To start off this new Ryan rating system for foods that I cook, and it's just gonna be on an overall generic scale of all foods. So I think for Colorado green chili, I would give it a 7.2 out of 10. Very good. But I think that that is it for this video. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy my nice hot stew and get a absolutely magical night's sleep tonight in the cold weather curled up under those blankets. So as always, truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, please think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel and I'll catch you guys next time.